How far would you go to get your money back after you realize you were scammed online? Well, that's what we're talking about. This woman got scammed online and instead of taking the L quietly, she literally used fake accounts and email addresses to keep in contact with the scammer and even make an appointment with her before taking the plane, train, and bus to confront the scammer in person. But I'm Ju, welcome to the channel. Please like and share the video. Don't forget to sub. Now, let's get into it. Dose of Danny is a YouTuber who recently put out a video telling the story of how she got scammed by an Atlanta hairstylist and what she did about it. So let's look at how she flew to Atlanta and confronted a scammer hairstylist. Of course it would be Atlanta. But things didn't start bad at first. Initially she put in and received an order from this hairstylist and was really happy with it. So it all started in 2022 when I placed an order from this woman. So I went ahead and I purchased the tapins from her website in 2022. And when they arrived a few like weeks later, I was actually very satisfied. Based on being really happy with the service and product, she decided to put in a second order through the website to complete a different look that she wanted to do. However, when she went back to the site, it was down. Now there are a ton of businesses, entrepreneurs, individuals that sell products that don't maintain a website, or they try to update it themselves and it crashes. There are a bunch of reasons that a site could be down. Especially Especially nowadays with social media being so accessible and being able to contact and sell stuff from there. But this is still a red flag for a business that you already purchased something from. Danny kept it pushing though and just went to Instagram to make the purchase directly from her. So that's when I decided to go on her Instagram because I was already following the Instagram hair page. I immediately realized that all the comments were turned off. Danny went ahead and DM'd her, just letting her know that she was reaching out and what type of hair she was looking for. Melanie, who's the owner of the business, responded with prices and discounts. With the conversation culminating, in Danny sending $180 via Zelle, which is very important for later, so keep that in mind. Danny sent the money to Melanie in mid-October, and that was the last time she heard from Melanie. So after not receiving an order or an update, she reached back out on November 6th, and Melanie told her that the hair had been ordered from the vendor and she would be sending shipping information to her. And after not hearing anything else again, Danny reached back out on November 27th, politely asking for an update on her order and shipping information. And after not receiving any updates by December, she started asking for a refund. But of course there was no response. So at this point, I realized that I had been scammed. Keep in mind the website was down and Instagram comments were turned off. So Danny had been reaching out by email, DMs, and calls through Instagram, all with no response. She then tried to use a phone number that was listed on the Instagram bio to reach out, but still no response. I did file a dispute with my bank, but because I willingly sent the money through cell, they said that they were not at fault. They did reach out to her bank, but her bank was like, there's nothing we can do with it. And in the end, my dispute was closed. There was nothing my bank can do. So she sent money to this hairstylist, got ghosted, tried to dispute the charge and got denied by the bank, which was denied because she sent money through Zelle and it wasn't a conventional charge. I've always had a lot of luck disputing charges or any shady transactions on my account. So that's a good lesson to learn that money sent through Zelle can't be disputed and is basically just gone. And Danny also said that the only reason she trusted Zelle in the first place is because she already ordered from this business and just thought everything would go good, which makes sense. Now at this point, she can't get in touch with Melanie anymore and her bank won't do anything. But I couldn't just call her and been like, hey girl, this is Danielle, where's my refund? Because she's obviously ignoring me. This is where things get interesting. Danny pretends to be somebody else trying to make a purchase to get back in contact with Melanie. I assume she's just using somebody else's phone at this point, but Melanie has responded with no problems because she thinks it's a new customer. So Danny is up asking, can she call Melanie? And they jump on the call together. My name is Danielle, and I was actually calling to follow up on an order that I placed in October. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, so I placed an order in October and I actually have not received my order. Um, I believe I spoke with you last month about refunding me the money. The take your straight bundles. Yes, and you told me that you're just waiting on the supplier to send you the bundles and um, that you would refund me back my money at the end of the week if you never received it, but I never heard back from you. I sent you a few text messages, I never got a response. Um, apologies for the delayed communication. Um, I do have some personal things going on, but I can get that shipped out to you. Um, if you would like, if you don't mind, can you send me your shipping information? At this time, I don't want the hair, um, and I would prefer for um, a refund. Um, I ordered my product in October, and it's almost February. I haven't received anything. Um, no problem, but I, I never received anything about anyone uh, requesting a refund or sale. I, my bank hasn't contacted me at all. 
Okay. Um, well, I'm not sure as to why they never contacted you about it, but yeah. no, actually, I actually did send you a text message letting you know that I was filing a claim through Zelle. As I mentioned before, it's just been the process has just been like too long, and I would rather request a refund. And I could actually just text you my phone number and my email address connected to my Zelle, so you can refund back the eight one hundred and eighty dollars. Honestly, if I don't get the money back like within like an hour, I'm going to like file a police report because your bank um, said that there was no wrongdoing on their end. I haven't gotten any updates from you. And the last time I spoke with you, you confirmed that you would send me a refund and you didn't. I have to say during the call, Melanie actually kept her cool much more than I thought she would. Or she just unbothered because maybe she scammed a lot of people and she's used to this process. She never really got rude. She just kept making excuses and talking around the issue. She said multiple times that her bank didn't contact her. Like she wasn't aware that Danny had been reaching out for months by email, phone, DMs everything and never receives her order. After that phone call, I did message her a few more times and I actually did get on the phone with her another time, but for the most part, she just kept ignoring me and blowing me off. So that's when I decided that the only way I was gonna get my money back was if I confronted her face to face. Danny was not taking that L without a fight. She planned a whole trip to Atlanta to confront Melanie and that's bold if nothing else. Now I know what you're thinking because I was thinking the same thing too. She's going to spend way more money traveling to confront this hairstylist than she lost in the first place. But And I was actually able to find a round trip ticket for only $25. I've never seen a $25 plane ticket going anywhere in my life, even with Spirit. I assume she already lives somewhere in the South or somewhere close but not close close enough to drive to Atlanta or she just caught a mean flash sale. And her really figuring out the logistics of this trip is impressive because she found a way to get round trip from the airport to the salon and back for only $6. Which means if she is able to get her $180 back from the stylist, then she still goes home with $150 and that's a W. And not only did she plan out her travel, but she went the extra mile to make sure Melody was actually there at the salon when she arrived. Well, I knew she was going to be available because I used a fake email address to book a hair appointment for 2 p.m. that day. This woman opened the door and I asked if she was Melanie and she said yes. One very good thing that she did was actually plan a police escort, which is smart for a few reasons. One, I assume if you're a scammer, you're straight up stealing from people and not hiding, you're still at your place of business, then you're ready for the smoke at any time. Two, because she is in somebody else's space and somebody else's business, if something did go wrong or happen, I could see how Danny could get blamed for it or be liable in some way. So here's the video with the police escort of Danny actually confronting Melanie, but it's actually more audio than video because the camera is pointed toward the ground during the whole confrontation. Hi. Are you Melanie? I am. I'm Danielle. Um, I ordered from you in October. I requested a refund because I never received my product and I never received my refund. And I also have that between us um, requesting my refund um, from two different phone numbers as well as um, phone recordings and I wasn't able to get a refund from you over the phone so I'm asking for a refund in person. Yeah no is there a reason you have a security guard with you? Um no, I'm, I'm not also. can I help you out? I'm not a security guard. Yes um I can yes Melanie is definitely a bit more confrontational here, especially being pulled up on. And it seems like she definitely wanted to find out why the cop was there first and foremost. And after she realized he was just there for security purposes, she flat out rejected the refund. Weirdly saying that she wouldn't give her the money back because she brought a cop with her, which he clarified he was only there for security and safety. The reason why I'm a police officer is because I don't know you and um, I wanted to ask you for a refund in person and I didn't want it to escalate. Yeah, I won't be providing the refund today. Is there a reason why you're not providing the refund? Well, she brought you some. Because I brought a police she officer? She doesn't talk to her. It says nothing to do with me. I'm just here for security reasons. I um, don't plan on fighting her. Okay. I, I didn't say you were planning on fighting me. Right. Yeah, I yeah. won't be providing the refund today. Is there a reason why you're not providing the refund? Uh, even though you owe me money or product? Yeah, I don't. I asked you, did you want the product? And you said no. I wanted the refund. Right, I have a no refund policy. That's not on your website. No, but we can go for legal, legality if you'd like to. We can take it to the court? If you'd like to. 
And after refusing to refund the money again, Melanie says the reason is because Danny refused to accept the late product. And then she changed again to say she has a no refund policy. Later in the video, because the video is much longer, Danny then asks, can she just take the hair? And Melanie says no, because she doesn't have any in stock and she would have to order it. So she didn't have the hair in the first place to give to her. So even when I confronted this person face to face with police escort, she still refused to give me my money back or product. At the end of the day, Danny did not get a refund, but the story doesn't stop there. Danny put out this video telling her story about the whole scam disaster, and the video was doing great. It's up to almost 185,000 views, where most of her videos before that were in the hundreds, and she's also gained 1,200 subs since the video was posted. Meanwhile, Royal Luxury by Lauren, Melanie's Facebook business page, now says permanently closed and has been flooded with bad reviews. And actually, there were bad reviews even before Danny's story went viral. Maybe this page is just a lot less accessible than the Instagram was, but the story is definitely out on Melanie as she has an F business rating with the Better Business Bureau, as well as six claims total against her business and two in the last year. But I'm glad everything turned out good for Danny. Thanks for watching the video. Y'all let me know what you think about this story in the comments. Also, if you want to become a channel member, click the join button below. Make sure you check out the next video and I'll catch you next time. Peace.